all the good people know about the wonderful WB Welch and her incredible soon to be released novella partnering with Tori Hunter, The Last Letter, joining the show today. WB Welch, thank you so much for coming on again. Thank you so much for having me again. We, were we starting the game already? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Absolutely my pleasure. But it's my pleasure. <laughs> can, we, can we cut right to the chase? Let's talk about The Last Letter. Oh, boy. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I got nothing. Yeah, let's talk about the last letter. <laughs> Does the last letter um, have to do with zombies? It, uh, uh, I can't do this, Matt. I don't know. It's freezing me up too. E. Exactly. Say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Fantastic. So. <laughs> The last letter is about zombies. What what is it about? And it's you wrote it with Tori Hunter. So this was this your first time collaborating with another author? G. Yeah, I don't know why I'm so. I'm not an improv. I'm not stand up. I can't. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for everybody who doesn't know, I tried to get W to be to play an alphabet game with me. Um, <laughs> And it's not working out so great. It's okay. We'll just keep going. Um, yeah, thank just, you for thank is... you for trying. I, I do appreciate you. Sorry for letting you down. It's okay. It's not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm just kidding. Uh, yes, this no. is this was the question. Was this my first project with her or my first, first was, time? Was this your first time collaborating with another author? Yes, yes, yes. It was. Um. <clears throat> um if you would have asked me a few years ago if I like ever would have seen myself collabing or doing a, a co-author situation at the time, probably not. Um, I don't know why. I just never expected to see that in my cards. But uh, it's been a really um, nice experience, especially with the format um, of our book, which we've talked about a little bit now. But with it being letters going back and forth, um, it's kind of like actually getting a letter from your friend and being like, oh, what, what did they write this time, and how am I going to respond? And, oh, I'm going to surprise them with this. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. How long did this project take for you all to uh, to finish and complete? Um, I think we started talking about it back in January or so, but I'm really bad with timelines, so Tori will, can probably correct that later. Um, but... I don't know, I guess total we're we're going on month six now, about. Did you did you all use snail mail to, to communicate? Was it literally sending letters? Or pigeons? Um, I don't know. And unfortunately yeah. we, we we didn't we didn't quite get that into it. We've still been sending them digital. I don't know oh. if I could have waited that long for my next letter anyway. Like, <laughs> like after he was later. done, I was like, give me. <laughs> So this is this is a different take on zombies than other other books, correct? A different take on kind of the whole, I guess maybe not the zombies themselves. Like, I mean, they're still zombies, but in the the way that we approach talking about them and that a lot of the book is still focused on the life that's going on while the zombie thing is happening. Um, so it's kind of a, a collab between, you know, people drama and then drama. Is it, is it meant to be, um, very tense and suspenseful and scary, or is it meant to be more like a, a about a relationship? It's both. It's very tense and there are definitely moments where you find yourself like afraid for somebody else's life. But there's the the play is very much on the the relationship between the two main the two main characters um, of the book, and obviously them writing back and forth to one another, and you know eventually trying to change their situation. So the uh, the book is due out in a, a couple month, right? In July. Um, we haven't set an exact date just this summer. Late June, early July. It kind of depends 
um, we're still working on getting everything so that we can nail down an actual date. Okay. Well, I asked because I'm, I'm curious, like, uh, in most zombie apocalypse stories, there's always a cause for what happened. Is, is that something you're able to talk about? Like how, how this came to be? No. No? Okay. So we just, <laughs> so we just got some undead monsters yeah. walking around and some, uh, two female characters. Is that right? Yes. Are they, I, are they loosely based off of you and Tori or did you build a whole new character? I can't speak for Tori cause I didn't ask, I guess. Um, but mm -hmm. I don't ever base my characters like solely off of me. There mm -hmm. are little bits and pieces of me sprinkled in there, but whenever I'm writing about a main character, I definitely, I give them their own persona. Um, and actually uh, what I normally do, especially if I'm working on long, longer projects, I'm following a whole bunch of different um, female models on Instagram. And so I find different models who or a, a model who feels like they fit that character to me. And then I print their picture out and I stick it up on my bulletin board and I stare at it while I'm writing. And so that helps me really connect with my character. That's so interesting. I stare at pictures of, mo of models as well. <laughs> <laughs> We have we have a similar process, I see. <laughs> it's it's a it's a fun pastime. Yeah. It's yeah, it's very weird. I'm glad I made I can make this awkward for you. Um I is so what what's the like uh what's the takeaway from this story? I mean, is is there something that we're we're learning about these characters? Is there's I mean, there's always something that we we find out about characters in the development of a story, but um, as you were writing this, was was there something that you started to unravel about yourself while developing the character? Um, I definitely found myself in my head a lot questioning how I would actually act in a situation like this. Because the thing that I notice in a lot of um, just, you know, tense situations in general in a lot of fiction or uh, um, in movies is that you know that character might not actually behave how I would handle a situation. So it, it was nice to be on the other side of that and writing this big situation going down. And it's like, what would I actually do here? Like, how yeah. would I handle if I find out that there's a bunch of zombies taking over and I've got to, you know, am I going to go home? Am I going to barricade up? Or am I going to try to get out of the town? Or, you know, so that's that's been really a fun part of the process. Isn't it weird that it's fun to think about apocalypse like <laughs> scenarios? Like, what would what would I do if everything went to shit? Yeah, that's a strange exercise. I think that all humans do. Yeah, but you don't want to live through it, though. Like, not you don't really want to go through it. You just want to imagine it. Yeah, just pretend. Yeah, it's much more fun. Yeah, it's much more fun to pretend. If anybody's ever gone on a hike before out in the woods, you realize it's much more fun to think about going on a hike. <laughs> and actually go on a hike <laughs> yeah i have this story went out to a friend of a friend's property and they had like 400 acres and the vehicle got stuck in the mud and i have never seen ants so big in my entire life and mosquitoes that are like like and it was much more fun to talk about than it was to actually go through it <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's actually what it is but it's it's funny because the videos you put out i was i was watching the the second one <laughs> and i'm like she is not going to make it through the zombie apocalypse <laughs> <laughs> she cannot stay on her feet <laughs> i is made that... with the ground that night yeah you hit it hard i did i didn't mean to hit it that hard but i was actually tired at that point and i really i really ate shit <laughs> so this is like a this is like a 15 second video clip, right? Like 18 seconds or something. Yeah. How far did you run prior to actually recording? Were you just like do a couple miles to wear yourself out and then So that was that was Tori's idea um was for me to just run until I was actually exhausted. But the thing is that I'm pretty sure if I covered myself in blood and then run around somewhere that um you know, I might get attention like i wasn't trying to like get any cops stopping like asking like what are you doing so <laughs> you i just showed up at the gym at your gym 
and like got on the treadmill and was like I'm just warming up here I'm I gotta take <laughs> that would be great um so what I did instead was I went in my backyard and there was kind of this process I got covered in blood and then I stood there and did high knees for as long it took me I don't know like five ten minutes I just exhausted myself and then I got covered in blood again and then I, I did it for like another minute or two and I was like that's it I'm I'm there I'm tired and so I ran a few laps around my backyard and then dove across it. <laughs> and my boyfriend's just standing in the back there watching me like, you you need to stop. <laughs> I just imagine him like looking out the back door just like, hmm. that's my girl. <laughs> I'm sure it was very weird for him to watch me just like panicking <laughs> like I'm about to die for some zombies and then throw myself at the ground. And yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, uh, I think most uh, any method actor would be very proud of you for your dedication to the role of uh, running from zombies. You. Did you really get in that state of mind like you were being chased? Were you trying to literally terrify yourself? Um, at that point, I was so tired that no, it, I was. <laughs> it was all about filming and getting it done, and I ended up like diving about six different times before I finally said, "Okay, I'm sure I got at least one good take." Yeah, it looked great. How much blood did you actually use? Or it no, wasn't real not, blood, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, I can't say yeah. No, um, it's uh, just some party, party city blood. I bought a pint of it, and I still have plenty left for the next shoot because there's going to be more. Yeah, you're uh, you're doing you're doing videos now. You started a YouTube channel. Yes, I did. Um, it's you know it's on YouTube. It's just under my name, W B Welch. But we're going to keep making a series of, of these, um, just announcing new things or um, bringing a new perspective to it until the book the book drops. Yeah. So going back to the book, what was it like working with Tori? Now she's, she's got a big presence on Twitter. Um, she's very funny. And she does her, uh, sh she'll, she'll do her like live drunk readings and stuff like that on Twitter, which I think are hilarious. And she'll do these parties. Um, and she seems very, you know, uh, exciting and fun and out there. What's she, what's she like to work with? Exactly the same. She's got all these really big ideas and she's, you know, unless she's having a bad day, which we all have, she's just always on cloud nine and yeah. it's always like, this is what's going on. And I was thinking about this and I was thinking about this and then maybe you could do this and I could do this. And we just, we nerd out and we go back and forth. It's, <laughs> it's a really high energy and it's really fun. Yeah. I mean, that's how that's how she seems online, too. And um, for somebody who has amassed quite a following in social media um, and then with the popularity of your of your books, uh, Blood Drop, and then, then this one coming out, uh, how have you found like keeping yourself grounded? Because it can be tough, like for me mentally, like not checking out fully, like, just continuing to move forward with that and like not just say, forget it, I can't handle all, all these all this stuff. Like as much as I don't want to believe it, there's there is some pressure there, right? What do you what do you do to kind of keep yourself grounded and just keep moving forward? I guess I really don't think about it too much. Like there's there's not a lot of self pressure that I there's not a lot of pressure that I put on myself. Um, yeah. I realize that there is a there is a following, but there's still like enough of a a, a disbeliever in me that it's like oh they're not really that interested they're just following me just because and then I make up some excuse and so <laughs> like it doesn't feel like it's a really big deal um yeah. and I've always just kept moving forward so um really the hardest thing for me is to I guess keep putting myself out there because I feel like I don't know why anybody would want to keep up with what I'm doing. And so I constantly have to make myself continue to put a presence out there because otherwise it's just like, well, it's it's Twitter. People don't really care, like, you know, that I just, I don't know, drop my phone in the toilet or whatever. People do care. <laughs> <laughs> they want to know. <laughs> they like to. I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say they want to know about your doo-doo cell phone. <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess I think. I think really when it comes down to it, though, like everybody on Twitter that really follows somebody else, they do it because they can connect with that person. And yeah. so, um, I don't know. 
you know, I like to go off topic. I don't even remember what we were talking about. <laughs> it's okay. I forgot what I was I'm saying. Sure it's, it's been a long day for you, right? You just started a new job, didn't you? I did uh, about six weeks ago or so. And it's been harder to balance the work and the writing and then the home life than I was kind of expecting. So that's still learning learning process. Yeah, having a real job sucks. <laughs> it's like, how am I supposed to enjoy my life when I have to work all the damn time? Yeah. That being said, though, I love my boss. I have a really, really nice boss. Really awesome yeah. job. It's it just beats, a job. It, it beats being homeless, too, right? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I mean, if you want to, if you want to really experience some form of the zombie apocalypse, just like don't work for a long time. You'll find out what it's like. Yeah. So, um, with the last letters, uh, when you go back and read this, you've you've the book's finished completely, right? The book is written. We're still finishing up edits. Okay, so as you're going through editing and things like that, are you? What's kind of your gut feeling with this story? Uh, like, I mean, the, do you know what I mean? Like, because when I'm writing a book, when I'm writing something, if I know it's boring the crap out of me, I'm like, I'm changing everything, or whatever. Like, I know it, I'm not gonna put this out and let other people read it. Is there is there something inside of you that like, oh, this is awesome, like? Yeah, yeah. I've been really excited about about this project. Like up up until in leading leading up to the point where we were finishing our last letter, our last couple of letters, like there was a whole bunch of anticipation because it felt it felt like it was going to such a good place, but because we hadn't exactly talked out 100% of the details and we were still surprising each other, you know, I didn't know exactly what was coming. Um, but then by the time we actually got to the last letter, it was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's it. It was so, beautiful. Yeah. 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 I cried. Yeah. I cried. That is awesome. When, you, when you're able to make yourself cry and get yourself into that place, it's such an amazing feeling. It's almost like, did I, did I really just do this? Yeah. It's, I, it's because it's kind of like when you think about it, it's almost like tickling yourself. Like I, you can't tickle yourself and make yourself laugh, right? But somebody else can tickle you and make you laugh. But when you can write something so profoundly that like tickles you, makes you laugh, or makes you cry, it's like, holy crap, that didn't, it almost feels like it didn't come from you, right? Yeah. I, I do that sometimes. I go back and I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of us or all of us do, but. Like I go back and I read something and I'm like, whoa, I don't remember writing that. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then sometimes, you know, it's the opposite. It's like, oh my gosh, it's horrible. I'm going to delete it all. Just delete it all. But I like the good moments. Yeah. Yeah. One thing we haven't talked about that um, I can talk about that we haven't talked about anywhere else yet is I can reveal the character names. Nah. Yeah. Like? Nobody, cares. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> Fine. Breaking exclusive. <laughs> yeah, bye. See you later. Breaking exclusive on the Uniweb interview show. <laughs> the last letter's character's name revealed. Coming up after this commercial break. Do you like water? Do you like water with bubbles? Okay. <laughs> All right. Back to the show. I'm I'm hoping have you tried this? No, I, haven't. I was shaking it out actually. I'm I think drinking. it's uh I think it's Publix brand. You got Pure Elite? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> just make I'm just making stuff up as I go because I'm I'm really just trying to torture whoever's watching this right now who really wants to hear the names of the characters and they're just like scream at <laughs> Okay. Sorry. I'm oh. done. Character names. Um, we have Laura and Morgan. And um, Tori wrote Laura's point of view, and I wrote Morgan's point of view. Where did the names come from? I mean, they're English names, I take it, but I mean, like, where do they come from for you? I like, you know, not, I'm not the etymology of them. I'm not sure how Tori picked her character's name. Um, I ended up going through kind of naming 
um, you know, books, seeing what different names mean. And I didn't write it down, so I don't remember exactly what Morgan's character's name meant, but I know it was along the lines of like, you know, strong or it was a strong person or brave or something like that, because that was, <laughs> that was what I wanted her to really epitomize was I wanted her to, to be in the middle of this and, and be used to being the person that's brave and running in there and I can, I can handle this situation, but then she comes into this situation and uh, with it being zombies and she's like, okay, well maybe I can't handle anything. This is kind of big. Mm. Actually, um, I believe Morgan is Hebrew for zombie conqueror. <laughs> we'll go with that. There you go. Does she have a last name? Are, we, no, is it, are they all first name basis? I almost never give my characters last names. And I'm the same way. It's kind of weird, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess I thought it was weird for not doing it, but it's like, I mean, I see both ways. I just never thought of it until about six months ago and I realized I was looking back at all my stuff I've written and I was like, I don't think I've given any of them a last name. guess I, I just think didn't think it was that important. No, I don't think so. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder why. I wonder... I wonder... I wonder what Freud would th think of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that'd kidding. be a hot mess. Did did she, so? Um, Tori didn't tell you why she picked Laura. It was just just drawing names out of a hat. It was just there, and I accepted it. I didn't ask. Okay, so uh, this this is a novella, correct? Yes. About Laura and Morgan, and they are friends before the apocalypse they i would call them acquaintances they knew each other they lived in the same neighborhood um they might have spent some time together but they weren't too close and then the zombie apocalypse goes down um everybody who's still in the neighborhood barricades themselves in to try to make them you know as safe as possible and after a little while somebody in the neighborhood offers to start um kind of doing supply runs and then that's and when he's dropping off supplies, he offers to carry Laura's or to carry letters back and forth between Laura, Laura and Morgan so that they can communicate while this is going down. And then, you know, things take an unexpected twist and people get greedy and, you know. People always get greedy. We're just monsters. The real monsters always end up being the humans. It's never the zombies. Yeah. <laughs> they're, just, they're just mindless drones. Yep. Um, I'm hungry. <clears throat> Oh my god! I just I was I was gonna I had a question and then I I started thinking about Tori, uh, her tweet about do zombies poop, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I all I can know. all I can think no you don't think so I don't think so really I th I'm telling you, they're they're uh, powered by dark magic zombies are yeah I don't think they have to poop right. I mean, I, mean they, I don't even think they eat their food. I think they're just like it's a ravenous, yeah. They have to consume it though, to like to stay alive. They have to supposedly because if they don't eat, they die. So they must well, swallow. You, so you remember the movie Casper the Friendly Ghost? <laughs> yeah. You remember well, how the ghost? You remember how the ghost ate? No, I don't. It's been too long. So the I, ghost would literally just eat a ton of food, and it would just like fall through them onto the ground into a mess. That's right. That's what I imagine zombies do. It just falls out of whatever. Yeah, it just, you know, it just passes right through. But how do they extract the nutrients? They're not, like, trying to build muscle. <laughs> they need to be able to run. They got to they gotta keep that, you know, the good, the good fats and stuff coming in. The good fats, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carb up tonight. I got a <laughs> marathon tomorrow. Zombies... <coughs> They're they're powered by magic. I don't know what your zombies are powered by, but but my zombies powered by magic. Sorry, okay? forgot how to drink. Would you like some bubbly? Sponsored by bubbly. <laughs> um. Okay, I remember what I was gonna ask. So you're talking about uh those those scenarios playing out in your head. Is this what you would do? Would you hunker down in your in your place, or would you go somewhere else? What would you do if it was a zombie apocalypse? Let's set the scene. 
okay? You wake up one morning. The birds aren't chirping. The sun's still up. All the cars are still out there. Nobody seems to be moving. Nothing seems to be happening. And then all of a sudden, you see something rise up from behind a car. Slowly. As it turns its mangled head in your direction. And starts to growl. What do you do? Um... I'm definitely going to get away from my car. <laughs> okay. um, I, don't, I, think, I think in a zombie apocalypse, I think I'm the type who would hoard. I would get supplies and, and try to lock myself up somewhere. But I think if I, like, if I lived in a home, like in a neighborhood, I don't, think I, would, I don't think I'd barricade myself in there. I think I would probably try to get like, downtown to a high rise so they could yeah. get whisked off the ground. Like That's my instinct, I, don't, I think. I think that would feel the safest for me. Get up high. Zombies aren't good climbers. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say they probably don't know how to use an elevator and the chance of them getting into the stairs and all the way up. <laughs> I think, you know, I would have a better chance at fending off anybody who actually does make it all the way up there. Do you think a, zomb a zombie would be climbing the stairs and be like, 30 35 floors. <laughs> Screw this, man. <laughs> and then just turn around. Yeah, yeah, I think they would say it's not worth it. They couldn't even catch my scent up that high anyway. Well, I mean, it's, let's be honest, it's probably been a while. Water's not running. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to stay fresh. you got to find fresh. a way to stay fresh. How does one stay fresh in a zombie apocalypse? Hobass. Hobass? Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, uh, do you like... Are you putting buckets of water? Is it is it like 28 days later in your mind? In my mind, that's probably how I see it. Yeah. Like you're the... I'm not, I'm not going into details on the book. You got to read the book, but I'll talk about me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, this is, this is all W.B. Welsh, what she would do in a zombie apocalypse. Who knows what Morgan would do or Laura? They would do something completely different, right? And they did do something different? I don't know. I don't know. You're good. You're good. You're trying to get... You're always trying to weasel out no, of me. I, I'm interested. I always <laughs> want to know because me and me and Sherry always talk about a zombie apocalypse. You know, we're going to Costco or something. We're going to we're gonna go get some guns at Walmart or wherever and then head over to Costco. Like, I would immediately get... Well, yeah, I would have probably... If I was ready to leave the house, I would immediately get in my car and um go somewhere yeah because it's i'm on the first floor apartment and that's nope. not safe at all nope and i guess that goes to the point that you're in an apartment complex so you're just up in your chances that somebody that lives there is already infected oh yeah i'm sure i'm pretty sure everybody's infected in my apartment complex um it is a gated neighborhood though so i would just have to somehow get them all out like just kill them all. I do. So if you if you don't already, I suggest investing in a machete of some sort and keeping it by you at all times. Because if anything goes down, I'm ready to rock and roll. Like a baseball bat, meta a metal baseball bat, and a machete are you got to have the melee weapons. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I definitely would have expected. <clears throat> Nothing else other than for you to bring a machete to our YouTube interview. That's awesome. <laughs> Listen. Please don't chop me. I keep that on my persons <laughs> at all times. I don't play around, all right? People, I'm at Starbucks. You get my order wrong. Your, hand, your hand's coming off, pal. ka -cha. Yeah, I'm serious. Um, but, like, people just... people. People do. They they think about getting guns, but I think melee weapons are the way to go. Especially like in your mind, are these zombies fast zombies or are they slow zombies? They're they're the they they have um yeah, my words are not coming to me today. They're active, they can move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They all wear they, Fitbits. <laughs> they keep track of their heart rate, make sure that their calories are at a good ratio. Yeah. We haven't chased a person in three days. We gotta get going. I'm feeling fat. Yeah. 
like the rage virus 28 days later or world war z like those zombies are terrifying mm -hmm. right like uh, george a romero's zombies uh night of the walking dead or living dead or whatever um those are like whatever you know those are it, even um the walking dead the television show i'm not too worried about that these definitely aren't rage filled like like you found in uh, 28 days 28 weeks later but they're not they're not the slow dumb ones either there's kind of a an in-between ground um where i mean they're fast sometimes but not all of them are always sprinting like are there different like levels of are there different classes of zombies not formal classes that would be <laughs> there's there's just they're not represented so so not blanketed so like they're everybody is the same and everybody's acting the same sometimes they're fast sometimes they're slow um you know and we we kind of picked on the other senses too to kind of play on that like telepathic zombies no senses not not the sixth sense and we're, we're talking about the basic five. Oh, <laughs> like x-ray vision zombies <laughs> <laughs> These zombies can see through walls. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that would be unbeatable. Oh my god. That is terrifying. Um not, not to mention just like if a zombie sees you on the street just like looking right at you butt naked, like that's embarrassing. Yeah. I'm not zombies like to... You don't need to see the show. Yeah. The zombie's like, no, we'll pass on that one. I see what I see what's underneath the clothes. <laughs> That, needs, that guy needs needs hit the gym. <laughs> Too much, <clears throat> not enough lean meat. That's yeah. I would be the only guy to be turned down by zombies. <laughs> you don't think they want the fatty ones? You don't think that they want some like? You, you think they want lean meat, the good muscle? I guess. No, I'm I'm saying yeah. I think I think that they would want the lean meat. They wouldn't want a big marshmallow like myself. <sighs> I'm too I'm too grisly. I'm too grisly. <laughs> like I'm like a bad piece of steak. No, I remember that that fat's good for cardio. That just gives them more fuel. That's a good point. That's a good point. And these are these are supercharged zombies. Um it, but that's something I don't think people have touched on a lot either. Like um different capabilities for zombies. They're all just so general across the board. Um, is that something we'll see? I mean, like I know we you said that the senses, like Better I don't vision, think the like ways hawks. we do, but we do talk about um, different ways that they, yeah, utilize other senses other than just being able to see or hear. It's like smelling. That's another. <laughs> They're like lizards. Oh my gosh, these zombies are like snakes. They can taste the air. They can taste the air. No, not really. I'm, I'm just, trying to get you to to give me as many details as possible about this book. <laughs> You tripped me up, and I told Tori you were going to. So that's why I told you I had to have my bullet points ready. <laughs> is there is there like a uh, is there like a zombie president? No, there's like not. A, a leader, a leader. It doesn't have to be a president. Not, 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 not on this one. We didn't, we didn't go to that kind of scope. Okay. We kept it very local. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah. it's based in a neighborhood, right? Yeah. One thing that was interesting writing this. That I didn't think it was going to be that much different um, was the actual letter format, because I mean, if I, I write in past tense all the time, so I was like, it's a letter, it's going to be in past tense. But it was the hardest part about writing this to me was conveying action to where the reader still understands and sees what's going on, but realistically, to like how it would be conveyed in a letter to a friend, because. Um, oh, yeah. I didn't want it to get to where it just felt like it was going off into too much narrative. I wanted it to feel like a genuine letter. And so that part was hard to me to give it a lot of description without saying, like, she wouldn't say all this in a letter to a friend. So is there, there is only the back and forth between the letters. That's the perspective we get in the entire novella. Wow. Start to finish. It's all letters. That's very cool. Yeah, I can imagine that would be especially coming from a mindset of like a, a third person or a first person trying to trying to write that. Was that the biggest challenge for you writing this? For, for sure? me, yes. Um, yeah. I, Tori and I haven't had talks about what, what was hard for her. Let's, can we talk a little bit more about Tori? Because she is the other half of this. 
this writing um, duet. I don't know why I wanted to call it a trifecta because there's only two people, but <laughs> um, but she like I don't know what her what's her writing style like if you can compare it to anybody. I tried to get her on the show and she said, "Don't ever talk to me again, Matt. You're an idiot." She didn't say that. <laughs> um, we're actually really, 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 really similar. Mm -hmm. um, we both the way that we focus on the human dynamic in things and we both lend um we both tend to write like on the dark side and you know how i've talked about mine being a gut punch and it's always emotional like yeah we vibe right there it's it just it flows very seamless very seamlessly if it i feel like if it wasn't for the varying characters and their personality differences you might have a hard time spotting whether it's me or her writing like we're we're really close yeah well, with being really close too, was there ever any points where like you saw something that she wrote or she saw something that you wrote and it was like you either didn't like it? <laughs> well, no, let's just say that you didn't like it and you were like, we probably need to change this. Because I feel like if I was in a writing, if I was writing with somebody else and they wrote something and I was just like, eh, it'd be hard for me to bring that up, right? Me and Tori have a very <laughs> honest relationship. So no, like if 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 I don't like something or I think it's not a good idea, I think I would very easily be able to convey it. But um, there wasn't really that in writing this. Like she wrote and I was like, yeah, that's great. I love it. I'm going to respond. And then I did that. And so we, we didn't ever really have to stop and make that kind of adjustment. But the funny thing that happened when we were writing it um, about halfway through I wrote my letter and I was sitting there and I was like, oh, I have this random brilliant idea. I'm going to I'm going to throw her and she's not even going to see this coming. And I sent it to her and she read it and she's like, oh, my gosh, I was just about to write the same thing in my letter. It was in the same twist. I can't believe you came up with it. Now I have to do something completely different. It was wonderful. I was like, I'm sorry. That's so cool. It's like kindred yeah. spirits. Yeah. Yeah. The same. That, that's really neat. Like you guys are on the same exact wavelength. Yeah, that, that tripped me out. I was like, no, you were not. You need to stop. But yeah, no, it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's cool. Because we talk about we talk about being in the flow with writing and it's like this quantum field that we play in. And if you're both dipping into the same stream, you might catch you might uh both hook the same fish at some point, right? Yeah. But it's always just like, Oh my god, how is that even possible? Yeah. I I couldn't <laughs> believe it for a while. It was funny. Well, WB, I want to know. Um, I've rambled a lot. You've you've been amazing as always. What are some takeaways that you want people to know about the book before before it comes out? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, we're both it's my full brain. of words. It's full of words. <laughs> so takeaways from the last letter. Um, we love the letter format, and I guess at first we weren't sure how everybody would respond to it, but it seems like people are excited to see how it goes. Um, so we're, we're really excited to get that out there. Um, one thing about our, our zombie novella is that, like I've said, I think before, is that there's a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of human dynamic involved, and so even people who might think that they wouldn't typically read something that about read something about zombies. I think they could probably still enjoy reading um, enjoy reading our book. Um, we do intend to keep doing more videos. Like I said, we're going to keep putting up new little bloody zombie snippets. Probably you know one a week or so until the actual release. And we are planning yeah. on doing a Twitter um, party the night before where we're going to be announcing some more stuff. And we're gonna like we're gonna set up giveaways, and we still have a couple of surprises in between now and release. Um, some things that we're we're going to announce. So for anybody who wants to keep up with it, we have a website called the it's the last letter sign up dot com, and okay. you know it's just a WordPress site, so you can subscribe and you'll get an email every time we put up a new announcement. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll put links to that in the um, video description below. Uh, do you have, are you doing arc readers for the novella before it we, comes out? We are. Um, we actually just did a, arranged a giveaway for them. Um, we haven't 
uh, announced the winners yet, but we were going to pick 10 from people who entered that. And then I think we may be picking just a few more um, to go out before before the actual book releases, but we haven't we haven't nailed down a number yet. We're still going through and planning our entire release. And I also, I forgot to announce this. See, that's yes. why I have my bullet points. Um, Is this another announcement exclusive? No, 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 it's not that exciting. I'm sorry. <sighs> <laughs> but we are putting together our PR kit. It's almost done. Um, so mm. we, are, you know, um, we're arranging a kind of a, a pre and a post book tour. Um, so if anybody, any bloggers or YouTubers or podcasters want to get us on their show, um, definitely get in contact yes. with me or Tori um, as soon as possible because we're going to start sending those PR kits out probably early next week. Oh, very cool. And <laughs> they just contact you uh, via Twitter or the, the best way, is that the best way to contact you or? Twitter is fine. Um, we also both have contact forms on our websites. Mine is wbwelch.com. Hers is toryhunterbooks.com. Um, okay. You can find us on Twitter. I think you can probably hop on Google at this point. And I know you can at least find me on Google. I'm not sure um, where if Tori's. You, if you uh, if you Google WB Welch, are you one of the, are you the first one that comes up? I don't know if I'm the first one on everybody's page, but um, I've I, I think I'm about at least seven slots on the first page between my website and Amazon and everything else. You looking me up? Boom. Yep, that's my face. <laughs> Number one. Thank you. That's so cool. It's taken like, I don't know, four or five years to finally make that happen. Thank you. There's, there's some like musician who's uh, above me and a baseball player. <laughs> There's a musician with your name? Yeah. He's on Twitter, too. He's got Matt Whiteside, at oh. Matt Whiteside on Twitter. And I, I wrote him, and I said, that's my name, pal. <laughs> Nobody sure. uses my name. I've heard of you. I haven't heard of him, so. That's right. Yeah. You hear that, Matt Whiteside? <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with me, pal. There is another <laughs> There is another person who shares my name, and I almost said it again on your show. There's something about coming on your show that makes me want to say my full name. But anyway, she's a. She's I have a that effect on people. <laughs> I have I have uh, extra senses. My eyes are actually like hypno eyes, like the frog from Futurama. <laughs> yeah, that's why I have to look at at my little my camera up there. I can't look you in your eyes. Don't look! Don't look directly in Matt's eyes. You'll freak out, man. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, WB. I mean, that's like. I think there's a production company, or something. Yeah, there might. Sure. I can't remember. It feels familiar. <laughs> yeah. They're probably small. They're not as big as you. I think they had a frog or something for their little guy for a long time. The Animaniacs? Do you remember them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's my yeah. show. Freakazoid? Yeah. So many good ones. Anyway, WB, it's always a pleasure to have you come on the show um, and talk about your amazing uh, life that's so much better than mine in every way possible. Uh, I thank you so much. <laughs> I'm gonna go cry on my cornflakes. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it, it is it always great. I'm gonna put links to all the information that you provided in the video so people can find you and Tori Hunter if they want to uh, um, look for the book. Or they want to become part of the uh, Arc Readers and uh, or get the PR kits. If bring this is an amazing woman to have on your show, podcast, anything. All of you uh, YouTube or podcasters out there, make sure you you. Uh, Get her on right away. Thank you. I You're appreciate welcome. it. I always enjoy talking to you. You always throw me off my feet. You always make me like, I really have to think to keep up with you because sometimes I don't even know which way to go. Because I'm so smart. <laughs> I, I tried to play your alphabet game. I'm sorry I let you down. It's okay. If it, It's a really fun game. You and your, me and me and Sherry play it all the time. It's a fun game to play with your significant other. Just have them have just... It's simple. Just, I mean, you have to learn the alphabet first, which is tough. It took me a couple of weeks, but once Maybe you get that down, it's like so fun. <laughs> oh, I obviously need a little help with that. Maybe a, maybe I can sing a tune and it'll help me remember it better. Yeah. Good luck coming up with the song for the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, but seriously. <laughs> WB, thanks again. Always a pleasure. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon.